Now, I will discuss the questions posed in the first assignment that is the assignments for units 1 and 2 uh, preliminaries of uh, electrical quantities and basic circuit elements. What I will do is I will outline the uh, steps towards the solution and I will also show the final answer. Okay? So, this is the first question out here. So, it says determine I 1 what is shown is a node with 4 wires connected. Now, 3 of the currents are given and you have to find the fourth one and obviously, Kirchhoff's current law is the method to solve this. Now, 2 of the currents are given directly, this is 3 amperes flowing outwards and this is 2 amperes flowing inwards. Okay. So, you have to take all the currents either flowing outwards or inwards. Let us say we take them flowing outwards. So, this will be 3 amperes and this if you represent equivalently as flowing outwards, it is minus 2 amperes. Now, this last one, it is given in terms of the number of electrons per unit time. So, all you need to know is that 1 electron is minus 1.6 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Okay. So, when electrons are flowing this way, current is actually flowing the other way. So, that current is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 6.25 times 10 to the 9 divided by 1 nanosecond, which is 10 to the minus 9, which gives us basically 1.6 times 6.25 amperes. This is amperes, 1 ampere. So, we have 1 ampere flowing that way. Remember, I did not put the minus sign here because I have already taken I to be in the opposite direction to electron flow. So, now uh, I 1 plus 3 amperes plus minus 2 amperes plus 1 ampere has to be 0. Okay? So, if you solve for this, you will get I 1 to be minus 2 ampere. Okay? Here is the second question you are asked to find V x, you are given a loop with some voltages uh, already specified and one voltage being uh, unknown. So, obviously, Kirchhoff's voltage law is the way to solve for this. This voltage V 1, its value is not uh, given directly, but it, you are told that if V 1 is applied across a 2 kilo ohm resistor, 5 amperes flows in this direction. Okay. So, now we know that if V 1 is applied across the resistor, the current in this direction will be V 1 divided by R. Now, V 1 divided by R is given to be minus 5 milli amperes. Okay. So, what does it say? R is given. So, V 1 is minus 10 volts. Okay. So, in this polarity, you have minus 10 volts. Then, all you have to do is to sum up all the voltages in a consistent polarity. So, you take the same kind of polarity, it does not matter which way you go. Okay. So, let us say we take the same polarity as V x. So, this is V x. Then, I will continue with the same. This is given to be 2 volts and I will continue in the same direction. What is given is with this polarity, it is 1 volt. So, with the polarity I have marked in red, it is minus 1 volt and similarly, with this which is consistent with the direction of the loop, it is plus 10 volts. Okay. So, now I sum up everything V x plus 2 volts plus minus 1 volt plus 10 volts to be equal to 0. So, from this we get V x to be minus 11 volts. So, basically all you need to know is Ohm's law to be able to calculate V 1 and then take the voltages in a consistent direction around the loop. I took it so that uh, I started with the polarity given for V x and then I continued in that way. You could have taken the other way also, you would get exactly the same answer. Okay? So, polarities are extremely important and please be mindful of them in solving all the problems. Okay? Uh, here is the third problem extremely simple. Uh, 
what you are told is that IV characteristics of a resistor are given and you have to find the resistance. Basically, you know that IV characteristics are a straight line and the slope of this line corresponds to the conductance. And of course, this is passing through the origin, otherwise it would not be a resistor. And then one other point is given, when the voltage is minus 3 volts, the current is minus 100 microampere. To calculate the slope of this, it is extremely easy. So, this distance is 3 volts and the corresponding vertical distance is 100 microamperes. So, the conductance which is the slope is 100 microamperes divided by 3 volts and the resistance which is the inverse of that is 3 volt by 100 microamperes equals 30 kilo ohms. Okay. So, and that is what is given here. The next question, the mutual inductor is given, some current is given through the first winding. The second winding is left open. So, that means that the current here is 0. Okay. Now, you are asked to calculate V 1 at a particular time and some shape is given for I 1 consisting of straight line segments. Okay. So, you can of course, solve for this systematically. You know that the voltage across one of the coils of an inductor is L 1, the self inductance of the coil times time derivative of I 1, which is I 1 that is the current flowing through the first coil plus mutual inductance times the current through the second coil. I 2 is given to be 0 over there. Okay. So, this entire term becomes 0. All you have is really a single coil. If you open circuit one of the coils of a mutual inductor, it is basically a single coil corresponding to the other one. So, then L 1 is given. So, all you have to do is to find the slope and slope of a straight line can be found very easily over a period of uh, 3 microsecond that is 1 microsecond to 4 microsecond the current changes by 4 milliamps. So, L 1 times d i 1 by d t is 3 milli henry times the change in current is minus 4 milliamps, because it starts from uh, plus 2 and then going to goes to minus 2. So, it is minus 4 milliamps divided by 3 microseconds. Okay. So, this corresponds to minus 4 volts. Okay. So, V 1 in this direction, you know the dot convention and the polarity for V 1 and so on. I did not discuss that, but based on that I have written this and V 1 turns out to be minus 4 volts. Okay. So, in many cases you would have got either uh, negative signs where there should not be and so on. So, please go back and check every step to make sure that you have taken the correct signs for every voltage and current at every step. This is the fifth question. We have a capacitor and you are asked to find the voltage across the capacitor at some time. Okay. So, you have to use the equation governing the current voltage of the capacitor. You know that the capacitor voltage is 1 over C integral of uh, I of t d t from 0 to a certain time, let us say t 1. Okay in this particular case that is 6 microsecond and to that you have to add the voltage of the capacitor at t equal to 0. The statement of the question says you have to find V c at uh, t equal 6 microseconds. So, that is why I have 6 microseconds as the upper limit and V c of 0 is 0 because it says capacitor is initially discharged. The waveform consists of straight line segments that basically means that you can calculate the slopes very easily. What is it that you have to find? You have to find the integral of the current flowing through the capacitor by the way. Let me denote this as to be I c just to avoid confusion. You have to find I c in this direction and integrate it to find V c with this polarity. And I c by Kirchhoff's current law is just I 1 plus I 2. Okay. So, what I have to do is 
find the area under i 1 plus i 2 and integration is a linear operation. So, I can find the area under i 1 up to 6 microseconds and area under i 2 up to 6 microseconds and add the two together. So, now what is the area under i 1? We have basically in this uh, positive part, we have 5 milliamps times 2 microseconds and here we have minus 5 milliamps times 1 microsecond. Similarly, this uh, positive area is uh, plus 5 milliamps times 2 microsecond and finally, this negative area is minus 5 milliamps times 1 microsecond. Okay. So, if you calculate the total area, you will get 2 times 5 milliamps times 1 micro second. Okay. So, you can imagine, uh, let me erase all this. So, this negative area cancels that one and this negative area cancels that one. Okay. So, you will be left with only this much. Okay. So, this is 10 milliamp times microseconds, which is basically 10 nano coulombs. Okay. Be careful of all the units while uh, carrying out these integrations and so on. Okay. Similarly, the area under I 2 can be calculated. I notice that this positive area cancels this negative area. Similarly, this negative area cancels that positive area. So, what I am left with is this part of it and I can easily calculate that area to be area under I 2. I have to calculate all the way to 6 microseconds. Some of the areas have cancelled out. I am left with this orange part and that gives me basically 1.5. I have 1.5 because I have 1 microsecond here and here I do not have the full uh, rectangle. I have only a triangle. So, it is 1.5 uh, microsecond times 5 milliamps which is 7.5 nano coulombs. Okay. So, the total area is 17.5 nano coulombs and I have to divide it by the capacitance. So, V c at 6 microseconds will be 17.5 nano coulombs by 10 nano farad which is 1.75 volts. Okay. Then we come to the sixth problem. In this case, we have a mutual inductor, but uh, currents are being driven into both coils. Okay. So now let me uh, denote the currents with proper polarities. I'll choose both coil currents as flowing into the dots. Let me call this I one prime, and this is I two prime. Okay. So, remember I 1 prime and I 2 prime, I have chosen them to be flowing into the dots. Then by convention of uh, uh, mutual inductance, I know that V 1 with the dot being positive, okay, it is L 1 d I 1 prime by d t plus m d i 2 prime d t and similarly, v 2 with the dot being positive is m d i 1 prime by d t plus l 2 d i 2 prime by d t. I mean do not get confused with the symbols i 1 and i 2 used for this. You have to take the currents going into the dot and calculate the voltages with the dot defined as positive for the voltage and we are asked to find v 2. Okay, at t equals 4 microseconds and you are given uh, I 1 prime and I 2 prime effectively. Okay, I 2 prime is nothing but minus I 2 and I 1 prime is simply I 1. Okay. 
So, all I have to do is to calculate these derivatives and also I have to do it at t equals 4 microsecond that is at this instant. Okay. So, now I have to calculate the slope of uh, this part of the straight line. I find that the slope of uh, I 1 is it is changing from plus 5 milliamps to minus 5 milliamps over an interval of 2 microseconds. So, minus 10 milliamps by 2 microsecond is the slope of I 1 and I 2 is increasing from minus 10 milliamps to plus 10 milliamps over a period of 2 microseconds. So, the slope of this is plus 20 milliamps, it changes by 20 milliamps over a period of 2 microseconds okay. and L 2 and m are given. So, it is quite easy. So, I have to take m which is 1 milli Henry times the rate of change of uh, I 1 prime which is minus 10 milliamp by 2 microsecond plus L 2 which is 4 milli Henry times this is remember this plus 20 milliamp by 2 microsecond is rate of change of I 2 and I 2 prime is minus I 2. So, the rate of change of I 2 prime is the negative of this. So, I will again get a negative number here minus 20 milliamp by 2 microsecond and if I add up these two I will get uh, minus 5 volts from this and minus 40 volt from that which gives me minus 45 volts. Okay. So, again it is a matter of uh, using the I V characteristic of the mutual inductor with the correct sign convention. Okay. So, you keep the sign convention in mind otherwise you will get uh, all kinds of wrong results. In this case there are two terms. So, if you make a mistake in uh, sign for both of them it is actually good at least you will get the same magnitude but the negative answer. But if you make a mistake in sign for one of them you will get some uh, confusing answer which uh, looks different in both sign and magnitude from the actual answer. Okay. So, please be very, very meticulous about uh, the signs of voltages and currents. And here is the last problem. You should find this uh, current I 1 at t equals 5 microseconds. Okay. Now, we have a voltage V connected to a capacitor, an inductor and a resistor. Now, it is clear that the same voltage V appears across all of them okay, just by Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, voltage here is V of t, voltage there is V of t and the voltage there is V of t. Okay. So, now uh, what do I have to do to find uh, this uh, current I 1? I have to calculate the current through the resistor, current through the inductor and current through the capacitor and sum them all up. So, I have I R, I L and I C and the waveform of uh, V is given here. Okay. So, let us calculate all three currents and add them up and also you are supposed to do it at t equals 5 microseconds. So, the easiest to calculate is I R. Okay. So, at t equals uh, 5 microseconds V is 1 volt and R is uh, 1 kilo ohm. So, I R simply equals V by R which is 1 milli ampere. Now, next I C will be C times the time derivative of V C which is 10 nano farad and the time derivative of uh, V which is basically the slope of this part of the line it falls by 2 volts over 2 microseconds. So, the slope is minus 2 volts by 2 microsecond which gives you minus 10 milliamps and finally, you have to calculate uh, I L and I L. So, this is I C and I L is 1 over L integral under the voltage curve from 0 to 5 microseconds plus the value of the inductor current at 0 which is given to be 0. So, that goes away. So, what I have to do is to find the area under this curve. 
okay, up to 5 microseconds. So, I see that this negative area cancels with that. You have to find the area up to this part. So, that is the area that you have to find. By summing up the rectangle and the triangle which make up this odd shaped polygon, you will see that the area of that is 2.75 microseconds times 2 volts. That is the area and I have to divide that by the inductance which is 1 milli henry to get the total current to be 5.5 milli amps. And this I 1 is nothing but that sum of uh, I R, I L and I C which comes out to be minus 3.5 milli amps. Okay. So, to summarize what you have to do to solve this assignment is first of all you have to be familiar with Kirchhoff's current law and voltage law and you have to take the quantities in each in a consistent direction. For instance, for Kirchhoff's current law you take all currents flowing outwards from a node. Similarly, for Kirchhoff's voltage law you mark all the voltages around the loop in the same direction. Okay. If some voltages are given in the opposite direction, so you negate the value and take it in your direction initially it always pays to be systematic. And secondly, you need to know all the element uh, I V characteristics also with the correct polarity of voltages and currents. So, most of this is uh, basically keeping track of uh, the right polarities of voltages and currents and because you are given some waveforms in places you have to calculate uh, slopes of these waveforms or areas under the waveforms. Okay.